as citizens, we also have a, we all have an incentive to get the actual killer off the streets, right? Because as long as when you convict the wrong guy, the right guy stays free and almost always goes on to commit more terrible crimes. So it's a public safety issue. You know, hope is like the thing that sustains you in there. And it's kind of like when you're baking a cake, you can't have too much and you cannot have too little. You have to have just the right amount because you have to have realistic expectations. Do it over, I think I would have had my attorney be more in the media because she was allowing them to control the narrative. She thought, you know, just leave it alone. We'll just try the case. You know, when we get to the courtroom, that's really what matters. But Jurors are influenced, and when you put someone up there and you say, hey, have you heard about this case? Sometimes people are just kind of interested in it, you know, and they're like, they can lie. You don't know if they formed an opinion, if they followed the case, if they've been reading the newspaper. So, you know, this whole system is run by humans, and, you know, humans are fallible. And I think the most unfortunate thing is that whole thing about prosecutorial misconduct. You know, in these cases, they, there's, information that they see that doesn't match. And that information, that doubt, should be magnified because it, it, it shows something. It shows that if we put the wrong people in prison, as you, as you said, okay. here we have other crimes being continued because these weren't the criminals in the first place. And the death penalty in particular is such a it's such an insane thing that we still have it at all. And when I get into arguments with people who are pro-death penalty, I'm like, well, how many innocent people are you okay with executing, like percentage-wise, you know? And they go, no, 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 you know, but, and I go, but the system, you know it doesn't work right. And even if everybody was doing their best, it would still be mistakes. So how, and then it's, it's sort of hard to go. That it is a myth that everybody runs around saying I'm innocent. I mean, there certainly are people, and you, you both, I'm sure, could testify that, who would like you to think that they are, but they're not. Does, how many people know who Willie Horton is, by the way? Um, everybody remember? Well, he was the guy that ruined Michael Dukakis's campaign back in, um, whatever it was, how many years ago? Because <clears throat> they, they vilified him, another racist thing, right? But it was weird because I was giving a speech in a maximum security prison in Maryland and I actually met him. And he was one of those guys. He was up to me. He's like, hey, man, I'm innocent. I'm like, no, you're not, man. I go, you're Willie Horton and you fuck this shit up for everybody. Wow. Um, I, mean, <laughs> so I think that the, the numbers are actually staggering. Like, I think that, that realistically we have over 100,000 innocent people in prison. Um, the more recent studies have shown that. And we'll never know, but we know that we execute a lot of innocent people in this country. And we need to do away with that. We execute, I think we're in the top five of, of countries that execute the most amount of people, and, and the rest of the list is bad. There are bad people in prison. Don't get me wrong, but there's bad people in the world, you know? And who are we to take someone's life? I just find so much hypocrisy in the death penalty. You're literally killing someone for killing someone. Like, eye for an eye, that stuff is old. I mean, it's just out. <laughs> And then, you know, you know, there's like a whole New Testament and, you know, no matter what your no matter what your religion is, <laughs> no matter what your religion is, there is always a higher power and we are not that higher power. So encourage every one of you to serve on juries. Um, that's something that you can do. You will get those annoying jury no duty notices. We all get them and nobody wants to do it, but you may hold the life of somebody like them in your hands and you're woke. So show up, um, and uh, yeah, show up and, and, you know, and, and pay attention because you know, it's so important that you did this and, and the podcast and Making a Murder and all these things are starting to, to penetrate that veil of people because we know that when people go and see somebody just sitting in the defendant's chair, just like Duran, they know, the, the studies have shown that 80% of people already think they're guilty just because they're there because they believe that the system works the way it's supposed to. Bust pipes. And when you put people under pressure, you always have this thing where folks say, well, I wouldn't admit to a crime that I didn't commit. You know, that's kind of crazy. Why would I do that? And then you begin to investigate things like the read technique. You begin to investigate, you know, even the Central Park Jaga case in depth in order to truly understand that it wasn't like they arrested some young innocent folks and they just said right away, hey, okay, we did it. Right? There's a film coming out in about 34 days called When They See Us. And it's a, very, it's a very important film because it shows the story of the Central Park Five in a feature film kind of way so that folks can get an opportunity to understand these, interest, these, these, um, these moments 
of the story that they haven't truly already known or truly known. Things like Raymond Santana and Kevin Richardson got arrested the night that this crime happened. And they got arrested for being in the park after dark. <laughs> I mean, can you imagine? Being in the park after dark, this was a law, and it's still a law. You know, you can't be in the park past a certain time. This is what they got arrested for. They were, getting, they were gonna get um, desk appearance tickets, getting, they were gonna get released to their parents, and then all of a sudden they found this woman. And when they found the woman, everything shifted, and they began to focus on these guys. And it was like, originally the Central Park precinct was involved, and then all of a sudden, Manhattan North Homicide Detective Squad, officers that had been on the job for 20 plus years, this elite institution stepped in, utilizing every means of their training in order to investigate. And the, and the worst part about it is this, when these false confessions began to be made, these detectives knew that nothing matched anything that anyone else was saying. They knew this. They knew that forensics, when they recreated the crime scene as the case went further, that nothing that they had garnered matched anything that was found out that was truthful in this case. And on top of that, they arrested Corey Wise and Yusuf Salam, myself, the very next day.